<laughs> Let me just say good evening to everybody. My name is Tristina Dietz Elms. I'm an artist from Florida. So I am over in the Tampa area, uh, just south of Tampa. And I've been working with Pebio for uh, since 2014, so quite a while. And, um, you know, I've had my hands on all of their products, even some of the products that uh, when I went over to Europe that we don't even have here in North America. So that was very exciting. And, um, oh, there we go. <laughs> my screen was hopping around. That's all right. That's all right. Oh, and so this evening, what we wanted to do was highlight the new leather paints, but I'm also going to mention some of the other fabric type paints that Pebio offers that are available through the paint spot. Um, because there are some fabulous paints if you haven't had a chance to use them yet. Um, a lot of the ways that we use the leather paints, we also use the fabric paints with the exception of course being that fabric paints you heat set so that's uh, fabric paints that are on um, fabric as opposed to leather. When you're working on leather, you don't put the item in the oven <laughs> or through the dryer as you would if you were working with fabric paints. So I do want to let you know to feel free to ask questions about the fabric paints because I have painted a bunch of really cool stuff with the fabric paints. Um, also, besides the fabric paints and Pebio, let me just start real quick with those fabric paints over here. So there is the set of color line, which the leather is part of the set of color line, meaning that we're painting on a type of fabric, a very flexible surface. And so there is the set of color um, transparents or for what they call light color fabrics. Then there's also the set of color opaque. And so it'll actually say on the bottle that it is an opaque paint. And that allows you then, of course, to put it over dark surfaces and um, you'll have that nice dense opaqueness. Now, some of my favorites that are in the fabric painting are these uh, shimmer paints. So they're very pearlescent. And I'm a shimmer and glitter girl. So even my purse that I painted here in leather, I had to add glitter to it as well. It couldn't help it. <laughs> I do love my glitter. And so I love the set of color pearlescent paints uh, that are available as part of that opaque line. And then this is a, an example of the set of color um, glitter. So besides shimmer, there's also glitter. And that's also true within the leather paint line as well. I'm gonna be showing you the shimmer metallics and then the glitter metallics. So they have two different looks to them and you get something similar to that when um, in the regular fabric line as well. Um, something that I love is the silk painting. So I have on a silk scarf that I made with the Pebio paints today. and with the silk painting, what you'll find is that Pebio has this fabulous gutta. So if you're familiar at all with silk painting, um, before you put the silk paint down, or if you put the silk paint down, it spreads a lot because it's very uh, fluid. And so if you wanna create lines that are going to hold the paint in, then you use something called Gouda and it's very convenient. It's available in these tubes. I think there are uh, six or seven colors available. And what's nice is that you can then create your lines or your design. And then when you put your silk paint in, it will not run over the lines that you put in with the Gouda. Now, just a quick note on the Gouda, there is a clear Gouda and the cool thing about the clear gouda, gouda is that when you wash your silk afterwards, the gouda washes out with it. So that's just the clear one. If you're using the silver or the copper or the black, like this one, those colored lines will stay, okay? Um, and then my other most favorite is the marbling paints. I love to do marbling and marbling will work both on paper as well as it'll work on fabric. So I love the versatility 
of the marbling paints. Now, when you do marbling painting, there's there uh, the boxes come with instructions, um, and that's important because when you do marbling, you need to create a bath, what's called a marbling bath, and it has a little bit of alginate in it so that you're not working directly on top of just water, you're working on top of a little bit of a gelatinous bath. And so in the kits, there is a marbling bath. So it's in there. And then the, the um, bottles have droppers on them. So it makes it very easy to dispense the paint onto the bath once the bath is ready. And let me show you a couple of pieces that I did with uh, some of these paints. So I like to take just canvas and I'm sure at the paint spot there's lots of canvas. <laughs> there is indeed, right? there is indeed. Yes, so <laughs> when I want to practice with my paints like the for instance the fabric paints I just buy a, a pack of canvas and then I can sit there and play around with the paints on the canvas and um in this case, I was playing with the difference between the paints that are for light fabric because it's canvas, so it's light, and uh, using the opaque paints on it as well. And then this was a, just a piece where I adjusted a pair of jeans. So don't throw away your scraps when you're cutting up a jean jacket or doing some sort of um, adjustments to your jeans save those scraps of jeans like that you know we're artists right so I like save everything and uh so here is a scrap from the jeans and I used the opaque version of the fabric paints on there so that again I could test the paints out and see what the special effects were now if you're going to make fabric that um, you want to say sew into pillows or clothing or something like that, um, then I suggest that you get something called prepared for dye fabric. Um, it's called PFD fabric, prepared for dye. That's what this is. This is cotton prepared for dye fabric. Now, if you don't have a prepared for dye fabric like this is, um, and this can be used with any of the um, the set of color paints for fabric as well as the marbling. Um, if you don't have a PFD fabric, you can make your fabric PFD um, simply by washing it with a pH neutral soap. And I know on the website, I saw that y'all have um, at the paint spot, the Synthropole, and that is the soap that I use if I'm buying fabric and then I want to be sure that I've washed it and the fabric mm -hmm. is pH neutral and then I paint on it with my um, set of color paints here and then afterwards I'll either use an iron so you have to heat set it you put it with the uh, design down and you use an iron no steam you go over it and that will uh, you know on the cotton setting and that will uh, set your artwork um, or your design that you put on your fabric. Now, I use some of that PFD fabric, <laughs> and this is what I did with marbling. So this is kind of your typical marbling designs you can see here, and that's on a piece of that white PFD fabric. It takes the paint so beautifully. I just love I, them. This I have another... a question. I have a question. Yes. So the PFD. Yeah, the PFD fabric. Um, has it had any mordant added to it, any alum added to it that helps it grab, grab the color Excellent. better? Excellent question, Kim. It yeah. does not. Okay. And I do, thank you, I do add mordant to the fabric. Mm. And you need to, if you're going to do, for instance, with the marbling, mm. right? Um, so I want to use the mordant and that comes in the set. Um, with the fabric first. And what I do is um, you want, if you're going to do it on fabric, you don't want to leave the mordant, which is an alum, on the fabric for days. You don't want to do that. You want to do your alum the day before. Usually I do it. And then I pull my prints um, with marbling the next day. So you don't need to do that if you're just painting with the set of color paints like this. You don't need to prepare the fabric with a mordant. But if you are um, going to do marbling, 
you want the marbling paint to soak into the fabric so um or soak into the paper mm -hmm. as it were um when you're doing marbling so i just happen to love the effect that i get when i do it on i just love it um and then this one is some fun and funky flowers that i did and i just i just love the way they come out and then that way you can take this and make pillowcases or whatever you want with it now i've also um i've also I, this is a little uh canvas um book bag right and uh so i marbled the background and then after washing it after the marbling was done and dried and washed then i i washed it with the synthropole so i made sure that i used a ph that ph um neutral type soap and then i came in with the set of color paints and painted a couple of what flamingos because i'm from florida right <laughs> So you've got a couple of flamingos on there, including uh, a bunch of sparkle that I put on their backs. Um, but that is a nice way that you can sort of combine some of these techniques using the various paints from Pebio. And that is on fabric. Now let's talk about leather, which is the um, <laughs> the main star uh, for tonight. Oh, yeah, I have I a have question. A, I have a question. Flurry of questions. Yes. <laughs> Go uh, ahead, Karen. You, talk, you talked about heat setting um, the paints. Um, do you really need to heat set it if it's going to be a wall art? Is the heat setting just for garments that you're wearing or pillowcases? And uh, what would but, or what would happen if I didn't heat set? Excellent question. Um, you know what I do if it's on a piece of artwork, which I do incorporate. Uh, fabric into artwork all the time. There's actually fabric incorporated in this piece behind me is I just take a heat gun to it. <laughs> yeah. So just take a heat gun to it. That'll help set it. You're good to go. Yeah. For how uh, long? Right. How long? Yeah. Um, you know what? The heat gun gets very hot. So I only do it for maybe three or four minutes and then I'm good. Okay. Was there Ju another question? Judy, was that your question? Uh, that was part of it. I wanted to know if you have to heat set the marbling paints as well. Um, you know, that's a good question. Okay. You... <laughs> I always I always do anyway, because I after I'm done with the marbling, the either my paper, I even iron my paper, um, the paper and the fabric are wrinkly. So I let it dry um, after I've rinsed it because I do the marbling, I let it dry. Then I rinse it, whether it's paper or fabric, because I want to get any excess out. And then after that's dry, then I iron it and I iron everything. I iron the fabric, I iron the paper. But I don't know technically if you have to iron it to heat set it for the marbling. <laughs> okay. That might be a question, uh, Kim, that we, technical yeah. question we can ask the folks at Pebio. Yeah, I always say <laughs> I always say heat set is just yeah, it gives you that security. It's safe. Right, yeah. right, exactly. Um, uh, I I have a question about the marbling. Mm -hmm. Um can you thin set a color or set a silk down and marble with it? And if you can, what do you thin it with? You know what? I don't. Okay. I don't. I just you know why? Because I want a good result. And so marbling paints are specifically designed to work on top of that bath mm -hmm. to give you a nice bright result. And yeah. so um, I have taken other just acrylic paints, but and, and mix them with a little bit of water to get them to the right consistency to where they'll spread on the top of the um, the bath. Um, you do need to use sometimes ox gall if you're familiar with that or a synthetic ox gall, um, because what does that do? That helps it to spread over the surface. So if you're putting dots on your marbling bath and it's not spreading, that's mm -hmm. because it needs something to help release it, to let it spread. <laughs> and uh, your ox gall or synthetic ox gall will do that. But then I'm fiddling, right? Then I have to fiddle. And um, what I prefer to do is I just buy the paints 
from Pebio. I mix the colors together, the marbling colors. You can mix all the marbling colors together to get your own colors. Mm -hmm. So when I empty a jar, like for instance, this one's empty, then I save the empty jars and I use them to create my own color combinations uh, oh. just by mixing them. And I always buy extra yellow and extra white because um, of course those are the ones that you use for color mixing the most. <laughs> All right. Judy, Any other? Judy, did, Judy, did I cut you off or did you have another question? I did have another question. I just put it in the chat, but can oh. you set the uh, fabric paints in the dryer? And if so, yes. how long? Yes, you can. Um, it actually says right on the, the bottle. Let's see here. It tells you it's a, it says that's washing or resistant to washing. Um, I looked at it earlier, it was 300 degrees and it was 15 minutes. I don't, I don't see it on the bottle real quick. Just okay. the, the print, the print is super tiny, <laughs> oh, but I, it, I have seen it either on the bottle or on the, um, the Pebio website, the information about set of color, it'll tell you. Okay. Um, does it say it on here? Because I did print some things out. That um, so let me see. It doesn't say. Sorry about that. <laughs> but from when I read it before, it was uh, three hundred degrees, fifteen minutes. I'm not sure what that is Celsius. Sorry about that. <laughs> but okay. when most I most ovens here are still Fahrenheit. <laughs> okay. Okay. Because when I read it. It said the Celsius and the Fahrenheit, but I only remembered the Fahrenheit. <laughs> Sorry about that. No uh, okay, fantastic. So I am going to move on then to uh, talking about the leather paints, which are the newest in the line of Pebio's fabric paints. Um, they are just so much fun to play with, and I love the markers. So the markers, there are pots of paint. So exactly what Kim said. They're these 45 milliliter bottles. So it's similar to what you have with your other set of color lines. Although with some of the other set of color lines in the set of color opaque, you have up to a liter size. Mm -hmm. So if you do a lot more, um, a lot of fabric painting, there are some available in the 250 milliliter size and the one liter size. So you can get more of the paint. The um, the leather paints are new and so right now we only have the 45 milliliter size for the um, leather paints but i just i adore the markers because i like to sketch out my design before i paint it on the leather and so i do that using the markers um let me uh tell you a little bit more in terms of colors there are 35 total colors available um, there are 23 that have a what are what's called a matte satin finish. I would call it depends on the color. Some colors are more matte and some colors are satin. Um, there, so besides those 23, there are three metallic, which is a um, a gold, a silver, and a bronze. I love the bronze. That's one of my favorites. And then um, there is fluorescent. So we have fluorescent yellow and fluorescent pink. Then um, there's the glitter. So that's the gold glitter, the silver glitter, and then the rainbow glitter and um, something called duochrome. So duochrome is one of those colors that when you put it on a dark background, there's a color shift to it. So there's a mass tone or the tone that you, it looks like when you look at it in the jar, like this one looks like a pink but the undertone is blue. So if you put it on a dark background, you're gonna see that color shift. So there are three color shift colors within the this line. Now there are also a bunch of sets, which are wonderful when you wanna get started um, with, some, with a project uh, the, for the first time. And there are brochures in the boxes. So it tells you um, about the paints and then it also gives you a color chart. So let me show you, for instance, in this set, Right here, there are um, five colors. There's a brush and something called a preparer. So whenever you're working on leather, leather that has been made into a finished item, like for instance, this purse or this wallet, 
it has a glaze over top the leather. So you always have to degrease and deglaze. And so any of these kits for the leather are going to have a deglazer in it. So here's the brochure I was mentioning. And then for instance, here, you've got that degreaser deglazer. You have your colors and this packaging comes with a brush. But I love the brochure because it does show you um, all the colors and the, the formats there so that you can, um, and then besides the colors, it also tells you about the, um, what are called auxiliaries, which I'll go over in just a minute there. Um, but I love these sets. If you wanna dip your toe in and get a feel for how it works, definitely the sets are fantastic. There's even a set here. So this was a set that had five colors in it. This is a little bit larger set. It has six colors in it. Um, plus there was a marker in this one. There's no marker in this one. And then the set that's down here with the tennis shoes on it is a tennis shoe set. So it actually has a video that goes with it that shows you a project for uh, doing a pair of tennis shoes with the paints. And so this is a tennis shoe that I did. Um, it wasn't part of that project box, but um, you can see I had a pair of white leather tennis shoes and I've actually already put a layer of gloss varnish on it. So you can see it's quite glossy. And I used a combination of using a brush with the pots as well as doing a design like the kitty cat right there using the markers. I just love the markers. I think you're gonna love them too. <laughs> and the markers come in several different sets. So you have a primary set here along with the black and white. And then um, there are two sets of two. One has a black and white and one has the fluorescent. So if you're into fluorescence, there's the fluorescent pink and the fluorescent yellow in a set. And something very important um, when you're working with markers is to have spare nibs. So there are spare nibs available for the markers uh, which could come in really handy, right? Because when you're working on a project and uh, something happens to your nib, uh, <laughs> you want to just be able to change it out real quick like and keep going. Now, um, one of the things that I like to do is when I have um, a marker and I've used all the paint in the marker, if the nib is still good, just pull the nib out and rinse it in water. And then that way you'll have spare nibs for as you continue to use your markers, okay? <laughs> so that's a trick. That's like with the Gouda, when you're using any of the tubes like this from Pebio, when I finish with the tube, I unscrew the little top here and I just put it in the separates. There's a cap and a top. I put that in water and then blow it out or use a pin in it. And then that way I'm able to have spare tops. <laughs> <laughs> the spare tops are available to purchase, but I also, as I use the product, I just save those tips, those nibs, and then that way um, I've got them for uh, when I need them in the future. Now, um, the auxiliaries that are called are, there are six different um, items here that come in a much larger bottle. This is 110 milliliters. So you can get the larger bottle of the degreaser. So this is what, there's a number one on it. So that is step number one. You're going to be wiping down your surface to be sure that you degrease it out. You have to be careful when you use this because depending on the finish that was used on the leather or pleather, sometimes the, the pleather looks so good, you don't even realize that, um, uh, you know, that, that it is, um, <laughs> excuse me, that it is uh, not real leather. <laughs> and so this is, this has uh, acetone in it. And so you want to be very careful if you're using it on something that is pleather, because it can just eat right through the pleather. I've had that happen. Um, so I've learned you go to say an area on the, on the handle here, and you flip the handle over and you go somewhere inconspicuous and you try it on there and make sure <laughs> that it's not gonna hurt 
the um, the leather or what could turn out to be pleather um, before you go ahead and and degrease down the whole thing, okay? Or de uh, deglaze it. It's actually called. Um, now, once you've deglazed your piece, then there are several um, step twos, which are items that you can use as you're painting. One of them is a masking fluid. So you can use masking fluid, just like if you were doing a watercolor painting, for instance, acrylic painting, Pebio has a masking fluid for uh, that called drawing gum. This is not the same as drawing gum. You cannot use them interchangeably, okay? <laughs> the formula on this is just a little bit different, this masking fluid. And um, you're going to use that to mask out areas like this. So do you see where I, I had that color in the background and then I masked a design and then I put more color on top. And then what do you do to take off masking fluid? You use a uh, rubber cement eraser, which Kim, I believe you you would have that on your website as well. So the rubber uh, cement eraser is the perfect thing for removing the masking fluid. And actually there is some masking fluid on the back here. So we're gonna do that in just a minute. We're gonna put a coat of paint over top of it. Um, then there is also a thinner. So um, here, if you, you can use these colors for the leather in an airbrush. So if you do use airbrush and you want that, you know, quick application, the nice thing about doing the, the airbrush is that it dries pretty quickly. Normally a coat dries in 15 minutes anyway, but if you're doing the airbrush, man, it's like boom, 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 boom. You can just run right through your layers. And so you can add this thinner to the paints in order to get it to flow through your airbrush. Um, the other thing that I like to use thinner for is to um, glaze. So when I do watercolors or acrylics, um, when I'm painting, oftentimes I like to glaze certain areas. As a matter of fact, when I was doing this purse in the area here where the lotus is, I wanted to bring all the color together because I was using three or four different uh, shades of pinks and beiges. And so I wanted to pull it all together and I created a glaze using the thinner. Um, and that worked like a charm. It was perfect. <laughs> Something else that, oh, it looks like there's a question with the fabric markers or those for fabric as well. Okay, so these markers here are just for leather. Pebio does have set of color markers that are for fabric. I don't know, Kim, whether you had those. I, I wasn't looking for them on the website, so I don't know whether you have the um, fabric markers, but they'll say 7A, which is set of, set of color. Mm -hmm. um, and so there are markers available from Pebio for fabric. So thank you for that question. And they're also going to be the, the light colored markers and they're going to be the opaque for the darker markers um or the, or the more opaque markers as well for and those are specific to fabric these are specific to leather using on leather all right another really cool um which i didn't think it would be i was like oh that's interesting is um glue so there is a glue it's a step two so it's during the creation process and um so for instance, this little piece right here that I did, I took a, um, a little circle here and I was just playing around and painting on it. This is, uh, this is leather and this is leather. And then I was able to very easily glue it down onto the other leather surface. So I could see this being fantastic for creating patches um, where you're painting on leather. And then you can go ahead and attach that patch using this glue to um, attach leather to leather. Fantastic, fantastic. I just, there's so many ideas that sprung into my mind <laughs> when I tried that out. Uh, one of them being, this is a, a, a tribal wolf that I did um, on just a loose piece of white um, leather and uh, so I turned it in, it was all ragged and I turned it into sort of an oval patch. So I could take this oval patch 
And I could put this, you know, on the back of a jacket or something using that glue. Phenomenal. Um, all right. Then there's uh, one other thing that is a finish. It comes in this 45 milliliter bottle and it's a phosphorescent. So fluorescent, like this fluorescent pink and the fluorescent yellow will glow under a black light. Okay. That's what fluorescent is. But if you want to give uh, part of your surface a glow in the dark effect, then there's this 45 milliliter phosphorescent that you would paint over top as um, your last coat before you go to your varnishes. Um, and then that will give whatever area you coat it with a um, glow in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure like any phosphorescent, you have to charge it under some light. So um, yeah, just make sure that you've, you've charged it somewhere where there's good light before um, turning the lights off and then watching it glow. Very cool. <laughs> Two questions have popped up. Um, okay. Uh, Arlene Weston, uh, wonderful mixed media artist, uh, one of our instructors too. She says, can you use thinner to silk screen the paints on leather? Do you have any silk screen application that you've done? Well, I haven't done any silk screening. What I have done is uh, stenciling. So I use a stencil brush just with mm. the, um, and that's actually what, what I did here. Mm. So in order to, first I coated it, two coats of the turquoise, and then I went ahead and put a stencil over top of it. So I haven't tried to pull it through a, um, a screen print. Uh, the the paint, when we get to actually using the paint, you'll see that the paint is pretty thick. I would just put a bead of it and then, you know, pull it down and see it should go through your uh, screen mm -hmm. because the paints are very refined in terms of the particle size, unless, of course, you're using the glitter. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't nice. put the glitter. Don't try to put glitter through your screen, right? No. <laughs> Don't do that. Go. no, but it's thick enough. Um, now, in terms of the fabric paint over here, the regular set of color, there is a thickener. Hmm. And you can add that thickener to the regular, um, either the transparent or the opaque here. And it makes them just that little bit thicker so that they go through a screen better. But I don't know whether you can use that same thickener with the leather paints. I haven't tried it. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, the other question is, do these leather paints work on untreated hides? Uh, now, when you say untreated, like, for instance, this one right here is like a suede. Is that what the uh, questioner meant? Because it will work on the suede. Now, this is like you know, uh, has lots of texture to it. It will work on this, but it's just, there's a lot of texture to it. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, your, your design is going to look different. Um, and I have lots of pieces here because I like to buy um, just packs of remnants, right. Or uh, cutoffs, mm -hmm. which are fantastic because I mean, look, this was a cutoff. This piece came in a pack that was like seven, eight dollars US, right? <laughs> a big pack of scraps. But, you know, I'm going to turn that into a patch. And uh, it's fantastic, especially when you're just learning. Get yourself some of these uh, pieces like this. So the back here has that unfinished. So I'm, I'm suspecting that that's what you're asking about is can you paint on the unfinished part? And oh, yes. Heard. I was thinking more of a, a moose hide or something in it, or a pig skin, and it does have a finish on the outside, but it's a natural finish with no coatings on it. Oh, I would still um, take a little piece of it and use the use this deglazer on it to prep it, um, uh, you know, a small piece, because that's that's why I get these, because I do lots of testing with little pieces, just like that piece of cut off blue jeans I showed you, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I save little pieces, little cutoffs, and I use them for testing all the time uh, with stuff like this. So um, definitely you can you can check it and try it. It's going to work, you know, in my opinion, it's going to work on any kind of leather. And of course, it depends on what you want to do with that leather. Now, the um, 
Pebio has tested their their paints for 100,000. They have this machine that goes like this for 100,000 times to test their paints to be sure that once the paint is set, and like I said, you don't need heat to set it, it's just time. It's like 48 hours or so, and then it'll be set. Um, what I do is I leave my item for, uh, because it's humid in Florida, 48 to 72 hours, so two to three days, and then I varnish over top of it uh, afterwards. So this one has a varnish on it already, and there's a gloss varnish, and there's a matte uh, or a satin varnish. Um, uh, but I just, I test on things like this, and the neat thing is, I mean, it's, I've had pieces that are older, and they are just, they're still going strong because they're designed, they're made so that they can, you know, do this. This is one that's a couple of years old, but it, you know, it's not gonna crack. <laughs> so you can, that, and because it's designed for clothing, which they know is gonna be um, moved around and used. Um, but of course, if you are putting it on something that you're gonna use in a piece of artwork, you don't, you don't have to worry about that, right? <laughs> oh, all right, let's move this out of the way. Um, so let me just describe a few more things that I have here. Uh, I told you about the wallet. I love these wallets. You can get them at your um, thrift stores for what? Like less than a dollar, 50 cents, something like that. Oh my gosh, I love that. And so this one is, I think a swank. Yep, a swank. So you know, this is probably from the 1970s or 80s. And uh, you can really give an old wallet a new life just by adding the paint onto it like that. This is just two coats of the turquoise and it covers it beautifully. Um, and then this was two coats of the orange on top with a stencil. So I just used a loose stencil. What I find is that it's really a lot easier if you have a stencil that you can spray something on the back to where it, it sits down, right? It holds down. Um, now you don't want to do that. You don't want to use a, 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 what is that? A repositionable spray. Um, you don't want to use that when the paint is fresh. What I did was I left it 24 hours and then I did the stenciling on top to be sure that this part was set already before I put the next color on top of it, okay? Um, and then the color seeped because I didn't have the um, <laughs> spray repositionable glue. It seeped underneath, dang it. But all I did was just wait, a, you know, 15 minutes, a half an hour for it to dry. And then I just used a detail brush and came in and went right over top of it. And it, it, the paints are so nice and thick uh, or opaque um, that it just went right over top of it. And, you know, then I was able to resume, bring my design back. <laughs> it's easier for me to paint over top of it than to try to use some water and get up that uh, excess that went underneath there just easier to use your detail brush over top of it. And then um, this purse, I used the deglazer on it. And then um, usually on a dark color like this, if I'm working in a lighter color, I will put white down first. So I'll, I'll create my background design with white. Um, and then I'll go on top of that with the color. But for this one, I was just, I was in a hurry. <laughs> so I didn't do the background as white, but I just kept adding more layers, 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 layers. Like, so for instance, those, um, these leaves have about six layers on them of the paint because I kept going dark and then going light and then going dark and then going, you know, as a painter, right. Until I, I felt it was perfect for me, but it was beautiful because it was able to um, layer like that. And it doesn't feel thick and cakey. Um, it takes the layers beautifully. Um, and then with the flowers, like I said, I did um, maybe three or four coats of different variations of colors. And then I did the glaze using the thinner. Um, and after that, then I came in with sparkle. <laughs> 
<laughs> so this is actually um, now going to have to sit for a couple of days. I like to, it to sit for a few days to really get it, um, uh, the, the paint set, and then I'll go in with my varnish. Now the trick to varnishing is, and that's true with any mixed media artwork, the trick to varnishing is to use your gloss varnish first, and then um, I'll put one to two coats of gloss varnish. And then after that, I'll come on with the, the matte varnish. Um, that way, if you put on a coat of matte varnish and you layer matte varnish, one layer on top of another, it successively uh, gets more um, dull. And you don't want that, right? You want to be able to control that. So you put gloss down first, and then you come back on with your uh, mat. Like for instance, these shoes, um, I have a layer of gloss on top of it so far. And then I'll go back and I'll put the, the satin on top of that because I want them to be satin uh, when those are done. All right, that's it for chit chat. Let's get to <laughs> it. <laughs> Any more questions? I, th I think we're doing really good. Okay, fantastic. I'm looking at the clock. I've got 45 minutes, right? Yes. Okay, fantastic. So let's um, go ahead and go over top of the table then. I'll just move a few things out of the way here. And then I will show you how these paints work. I got I the spotlight to work. I got the spotlight to Yay! work. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> you go, girl. Yay, Kim. <laughs> oh, funny, funny, funny. Oh, okay. Let me get these out of the way. I have this um, old ratty wallet, but you know, leather's leather, right? I love, um, I love making old things new again. <laughs> All right, let me just move these out of the way. So, um, when you're cleaning your leather, one of my secret weapons is these uh, white sponges. What are they, the Mr. Clean or whatever they're called? And I find um, this one's damp. I put it in water and then um, to dampen it because I find sometimes they're just little, especially when you're working with old items like this, um, that really gets in there and helps to get the dirt out. And uh, so normally all that you can see there, it's already, yes, the magic eraser, you got it. So, um, if it's an old thing like this, I'll often go over it first with the magic eraser to get up um, any of that excess that's gonna come off. You do have to be careful with the magic erasers because they do have a, a, you know, a slight bit of abrasion to them. So you do wanna be careful. Um, but something like this, an old wallet, not a problem at all to use that. There's still even more coming off. So, um, and then I would want to, what I do is I get a whole bunch of different things together that I want to degrease all at the same time. So for instance, let's say I want to degrease some of this and I want to degrease some of this right here, right? I get them all together at once because uh, I want to do all the degreasing at the same time. Oops. Let's this out. I want to do them all at the same time and um, wear gloves when you do your degreasing, okay? Um, because like I said, there is acetone in the degreaser here. So let's just move these aside for a moment. And uh, <laughs> now I have found that with my manicure, even doing a single glove like this, it still gets through. So for my dominant hand that I'm going to be holding and using the uh, the uh, cotton with, I put a second glove on. <laughs> I don't want to mess up my manicure. Come on now. Yeah, I teach Ac you. acetone. Acetone is nail polish remover. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll just go right through that single glove, and that makes me nuts. So, um, what I do is I just use like cotton squares. I prefer cotton squares to um, to using a, a, a paper towel for this particular uh, part of it because I just find they hold up better. 
And uh, so here we're going to take some of this and put it on here. It's really super simple. And then you rub this down. Like I said, though, you see all of that coming off of there? This is an old wallet, old, old wallet. This is actually a well-used wallet. The other ones I was showing you earlier um, were uh, new old stock. You know what I mean? <laughs> they, they hadn't been used. They were brand new. Now, I can smell this. Woo! Man, it's smelly. Um, and so normally I have my, like right now, I have my fan going. Um, or you can take it outside. But I can already see where it's no longer glossy here. There's the other side, see the gloss? And then see here where it took that gloss off? That's what you want, is you want to get that gloss off. Uh, now let's use, I don't wanna use the same side cause I don't want this brown to get on here. Or you know what, let me do this brown one next. So I'll just take this and rub it on there. Now this is changing color. See that? That's why I said it's so important to um, <laughs> work on a little area. And it's actually also taking off. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see where it's turning rough right mm -hmm. there? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I said, eh, you know, you have to be really careful when you do this because um, don't just go direct onto your, like the front of your purse or your whatever the piece is that you're going to be working on. Um, you need to test in a, an inconspicuous area because like this one's taking the color off. And so it's now a light brown instead of being a dark brown. And, you know, you might ask the question, well, but Tristina, can you just paint right on top of the, uh, of the leather without degreasing it? The answer is yes, if you're using it for artwork. Because if you're using it for artwork that you're putting on the wall, you're not going to be doing this, right? You're not going to be moving it like that, like crazy. So you don't need to degrease it or to deglaze it if you're going to be uh, using it in a piece of artwork. It's just if you're going to be using it for uh, a pair of leather pants that you want to paint or something like that, you do need to um, in the area where you're going to paint it, you do want to get the uh, the glaze off because that's how you're going to ensure that the paint will stick to the surface. Okay, um, for for movement purposes for this. Okay, that's the difference there. All right. See, I'm glad I didn't uh, use that on the white. Don't do it. Right. <laughs> okay. Here we go. So that's why I get a whole bunch of pieces out. Oh, this one's much better. Much, much, much better. It's deglazing without um, without like getting rough and and had, taking the finish off. Much better. So Shelly yeah. uh, is asking that, do you think the brown coming off is actually like the paint or the dye or the stain of the of the leather? Yes. Yeah. Yep. I can see that that's what it is. Yeah. Okay, uh, one this tip, one, yeah. Barely, barely anything's coming off. I'm sorry, what's that? One tip for uh, pleather and other plastics, if you want your paint to stick to them, you can use a less harsh solvent, which would be rubbing alcohol. And rubbing oh, alcohol fabulous. is nice. You can wipe it. It kind of dries up, takes the oily, the fingerprints, all that stuff off the surface. And it gives you a nice matte surface to work on. And it evaporates cleanly away so you don't have to worry about residue. So rubbing alcohol is what we sometimes use for those uh, vinyl-y products. Yeah. Fantastic. Genuine pleather. Thank you. Genuine pleather. <laughs> right. <laughs> I always have alcohol on my table and a spray yeah. bottle like this. And I usually have um, right here, I have a big one like this. Yeah. Because I use it a lot for other other things. Yeah. Uh, in the studio, it comes in very handy. Did you know that alcohol is the solvent for acrylic? Did Indeed. You know that? Indeed. That's how you yes. clean your brushes. We have a tip sheet on that. <laughs> yep. And not only clean the brushes, but anytime that I get a little bit, of, for instance, this piece that I had shown you a moment ago, ooh, ooh, this one, right? Mm -hmm. This one just had some doodles on it uh, from a demo. 
And so I wanted to see, oh, can I use the alcohol? Because these are um, acrylic based paints. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I thought, hmm, let me see, can I use the alcohol to take, to take the paint off? And sure enough, I was able to use the alcohol, just sprayed it on like that. And then this, for this, I did use a paper towel and I just went in. Now I have not put uh, the finish coat. I haven't done a, a varnish on top of this. That's why, even though this is two years old, I can work back into it with alcohol and remove the paint. So that little, doodle design right there now you can see it's taking some of the coating of the uh, leather off with it but yes i was able to excuse me i was able to get the um the marker off using just alcohol because it's acrylic paint so it's mm -hmm. going to come off with alcohol Woohoo! love that mm -hmm. <laughs> right yeah, really uh, sometimes I tell artists that and they're like, no. And I'm like, yep, if you get it in your clothes, just soak it in some alcohol and then do that and it'll come out. <laughs> yep. And life is good, right? Oh, okay. Woo. I'm getting the um this stuff right here. Normally I would take that out to my patio to do it. <laughs> All right. So let me show you putting um the paint. This is beautifully deglazed now. And um, okay, I have a tip for you when you're using um, this masking fluid. Well, I have a bunch of masking fluid tips, but one of the tips is that when you use the masking fluid, uh, the color that you put in the background, it's helpful if that color is a standard color out of the bottle and not a mixed color. And the reason is when you take off the um, this masking fluid after you put more paint over it, sometimes it will take this bottom coat off with it. And that's what happened here when I did this. A little tiny area up here in this one tree, um, part of the blue also came off when I was removing it. But it was super easy for me to just go in with a detail brush and fix that because I used a standard out of the bottle color for this. And so that made it easy for me to do the repair. Okay. So that's a, a quick tip there. Um, I don't want to do this wallet pink. Let's do it this uh, like a cool khaki green type color. What does this one say on it? Matcha green. Okay. So um, these paints, when you get them fresh, they're nice and fluid. So I usually just, uh, I usually just shake them like that. And then if you notice here, do you see the ring in there? That's because I take this and I turn it over like that. And I work from the paint that's in the lid and that way air doesn't get into the bottle. And that's Genius. what I do with, that's what I do with all the set of color paints. <laughs> I saw somebody do it and I'm like, okay, I'm doing that. Oh. Okay, so I like to use just your, um, usually the white type bristle tack one. And so here, let me just get this. Now, I want to show you how thick this paint is. It's beautifully opaque. You see that? You can still see a little bit of the brown through it, but for the most part, um, it's covering. I usually just go up to where the stitching is because I like to leave that edge showing because um, the edge gets a lot of wear, right? So anytime you have stitching, I try to uh, only go up to the stitching like that so here i would put one coat on and then i let that dry for 15 minutes and then i put another coat on and that's enough to um have a layer to do your um masking fluid on top of now let's say that for i'm going to show you some tricks with the masking fluid uh that you may not be aware of is there anybody in the uh, in the crowd that has not used masking fluid, or has everybody in the crowd tried masking fluid in the past? Interesting question. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to show you here. Okay, here we go. 
Let's move this out of the way so I don't get paint on it, which I'm famous for. Um, okay, so with the masking fluid, like I said, I already had um, the blue down and I left that 24 hours. So it was fully dry before I went on with my masking fluid and my um, red. So here you can see the masking fluid. It happens to be blue. Um, when you use masking fluid, you can put it on with a brush or you can put it on with uh, like a silicone tool, like this kind, kind of silicone tool, right? Do you all have silicone tip tools, uh, Kim? Yes, we do. Yeah, so sometimes I, I use the silicone tip tool. My favorite is just take an old brush. Don't use a good brush, <laughs> right? Now, what I do is I turn this over like this a couple times. You try not to shake it too much because if you shake it too much, you get lots of bubbles in it. Once again, like it up. And then, um, so this is just a ratty old brush and I go into here. What you're gonna find is that this is thicker than the um, masking fluid for watercolor. Okay, that Pebio has the drawing gut. Okay, so let's just do some, some designs here. We'll just do some circles. That's simple, right? And it goes on this light blue. And then when it's dry, you'll see it's gonna be kind of a dark blue. That's what's on here is the dark blue. So it's super easy to use like this. Oh, lovely. All right, so what I'm doing right now is I am preserving the color of the leather, right? That's that creamy color. Uh, so when I put paint on over top of this and then remove the, the uh, masking fluid, it's going to reveal that creamy color underneath. Um, that's how that works. Now, I have this brush that has uh, masking fluid on it, right? Do not, do not, do not put it in your water that you use for your brushes, okay? Don't do that. <laughs> What you wanna do is you wanna take a separate little cup. I'm gonna put a little bit of water in a separate little cup. And then I'm gonna rinse out this brush because it does rinse out with water, okay? However, you do not want this water going down your sink ever, ever. Hmm. And that is the this uh, latex or the also same for drawing gum, all right? So even when you're using any kind of masking fluid, I don't care what it is, any masking fluid, you don't want it going down your sink because what's gonna happen is it's going to line your pipes with latex or non-latex sticky stuff. You don't want that, right? <laughs> you don't wanna have to have somebody, yeah, you don't wanna have to have somebody come out and, you know, rotor rooter your, um, your pipes. Don't do it. Um, I also would not pour it outside in the grass or anything like that because you just you don't want to be putting latex out there. Okay, so I've got, you know, I've got this pretty much cleaned out, the tip of the brush. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to soak up all of this water. All right, and this paper towel is going to go in the trash. And that way, when the latex dries on the paper towel, it's just going to be disposed of as regular trash, right? It's not going to go down into your water supply, which is where you don't want it going. <laughs> All right. So I always have extra little cups hanging out so that I can do that. Uh, even if I'm doing a big job, like if I'm working on a big uh, watercolor, say, and I'm, I'm working with uh, masking fluid, then like this is my masking fluid cup. And I've got right now I've got hardened like latex on here that I could do this. It'll come out. Oops, here we go. Beep. There, it just came out as a big, like a little ball of latex, right? You don't want that going down your sink. <laughs> so always keep your uh, masking fluid water separate. Soak it up with a paper towel, throw it in the trash. All right, so this one already has, and you can see that it's dry. Now, this is the question. 
Oh, that was great. Somebody has to head out. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks for coming. <laughs> All right. Let's see. It's been a couple of minutes. Ah, darn. This is not quite dry yet. Almost dry. See, it's about the 15 minutes. I, I left the paint on my brush, hoping that it would, uh, you know, dry up quickly so I could just dip back in. Um, okay. So here you can see I've got the red on this side. So on this side, I'm going to grab my red. And at this point, what you're putting on the top, you can, uh, you know, mix your colors together. Any of these colors will mix together. So if I wanted something that was uh, like a fiery orange, I can take this. Ooh, it's fun to mix with uh, with this fluorescent yellow and you'll get some fiery orange colors. Um, the color mixing is fun. Okay, so let's take this now and I'm going to use a different brush. And I'm just going to grab the color here. Ooh. And I want to co cover up all of the masking fluid, right? So I'm covering that up. But I want to leave some of the blue showing just for design purposes. If you look at this side, you can see a little bit of blue around the edges. And so I'll just, it goes on so creamy. I just love working with it. Okay, there we go. And then we'll just fill this in. So it is very easy to paint over top of the uh, masking fluid. Just like that. Because these paints are nice and thick, so it's not repelling uh, the paint. Okay, there you go. Coat number one, and you can see the design underneath there, right? And then, uh, so that I would set aside, let it dry, and then um, come back in with a second coat of that paint before I would remove the um, masking fluid. And when I do remove the masking fluid, I remove it with the, uh, I showed earlier, this uh, rubber cement eraser. Um, you can do it with your finger, but I find that if you're doing it with your finger, sometimes the warmth and moisture of your fingers can reactivate the paint if it's not, that's on the top layer, if it's not fully dried, and then you smudge your uh, your work. Whereas when I use this uh, rubber cement eraser, I don't get smudges. So that is the name of the game. Now, before I uh, put this into the water, I like to get as much paint out of my brush as I can before I put it into here and then do this. You see how much color was in there? Holy kishmoly. There's so much color in it. So you can even, um, often I have multiple projects going on at once. So if I wanted to use more of that red, I could just put out some thinner and that's what I have little, um, little just styrofoam or paper plates like that. And I will put some of the thinner out. Look at this. Just pour a little bit of it. Or you can use a dropper. So if you want to be more precise, I use a dropper and I pull it out one drop at a time. Because the paint would repel, right? Okay. Um, so you see how much red is still in there? There's a lot of red in there. So um, because I have multiple projects going on at one time, as I'm getting ready to um, clean up my brush, there's a lot of red that was left in there. Um, and so I would just put a little thinner on my plate and get out more color and then take that over to another project. Like let's say this one over here. And am oh, I right? Am I right in guessing because that was... Um, like any acrylic medium, it's white when it's uh, wet and it's going to dry clear. So it looks really pink when you added the medium, but it's going to darken when it dries, correct? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It is going to dry. Now, um, here it's pink because it's just so, so um, transparent. Thin. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, this is almost dry. Dang it. Okay. Well, before the end of what we're doing, 
what I wanted to show you is that when you use the masking fluid, if you say, oh my gosh, I made a mistake. I, you know, I, the design's not exactly right. I didn't put it in the right place, something like that. Um, all you have to do is let it dry. And then once it is dry, pick it up and then go back in and redo your design. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because um, if I haven't put any paint over top of it yet, it's just, once it's dry, it'll just remove with your, um, that eraser, this eraser right here. Now it's not quite dry yet. Let me see if I can get it to start. Some of it's coming up. Okay, let me see if I can show you that up closer. Can you see where it's beginning to come up? It'll just roll right off. Bloop. I didn't quite get all of it because some of it wasn't dry yet, but I love that. It's very forgiving <laughs> working with the masking fluid. I love working with the masking fluid because you make a mistake, you just roll it right off once it's dry and you're good to go and we'll do it again. <laughs> there you go. So that one, that one is all gone. Okay, let's talk about, um... oh, hold on a second. My, uh, my head sits, all right. Let's talk about doing a design where I use a marker first, okay? So here's that brown. And let's say, um, like I said, I like to draw out my design first. And I'm gonna show you how to open these markers. Um, what's a good color? Let's go with the yellow. So um, you do, these are shake, 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 shake. We do need to shake these um, and they come wrapped. See how there's plastic wrap? So to get it off, you just twist one direction, twist the other direction. I'm twisting the lid. And then that helps to break the seal and then it'll come right off. Okay. Woo, my hands are sweating because <laughs> I have the gloves on. So let's get those off. Woo, all right. So what you'll need to do is shake the marker, the paint that's in here is the same paint that's in the, the bottles. So this is a um, uh, palette paper. So let's just, so you are gonna have to pump it to get the paint into the tip. Remember how I said also you can replace the tip so to remove it? Well, I did it yesterday and it came right out. This one doesn't want to come out as easily. Um, okay, let's grab a paper towel. There it is. So there's the tip. And then you just replace it. Okay, so I've got some good paint coming out. Let's draw something here. I'm gonna draw one of the cats, like what I put on my shoes. Let's do a tail here. You see how, uh, let me bring it up closer so you can see. You see how easily it's going on there? And it's opaque so you can see it. Let's bring this over here. I wanna put a couple of ears up here. So this is usually what I do. What I will do is I will sketch out my design using a marker that most closely fits the color that I want to use. If I'm working on black, like I was working on uh, this purse, I actually used a white, I used a white marker. So if I hold it up close, you can see the edges of the uh, flowers. I actually used a white marker because I wanted to contrast, okay? But for something like this, let's say I was gonna make this cat yellow then I would uh, just do the design in yellow. So that's my outline. Now, if I'm quick and I have a little brush with just clean water, if I made a mistake, I can pick it up. So, hang on. okay. So that's how quickly you can sketch out what it is that you wanna put in there. So I do my sketch and then I come back with uh, the color 
let's see what color do I want to use this one is fun because this is one of the special effects see where it says yellow or violet what that means is that there's mica there's a mica shift in it so if you put it on a dark color we may be able to see the violet all right and I want a smaller brush here for this and then I just fill it in now like I said, usually it's two to three coats that I'll fill in in order to um, get that nice opaqueness. Right. And the ears. Now what I would do is after this is, uh, after I have two or three coats on and it's fully dry, then I'll come back in and put the uh, details on with another marker. So I'll show you that in just a second here. Oh, they're so cute. I love it. They're like the little Japanese style um, kitty cats. They're so cute. <laughs> so easy to paint. So let me show you on the shoes over here. So if you see here, I did the kitty cat in the background there um and then after i had i think this one i did three coats of the blue in the background and then i came back and did the outline and the eyes the nose the mouth around the tummy the little whiskers i did all that with the black marker you see that and here this is um i do want to let you know that the fluorescence so for instance, the yellow fluorescent and the pink fluorescent are um, transparent colors. So when I put it on the shoe, instead of only doing three coats, I did about six coats. Um, and so it took a little bit more in order to get the depth of density that I wanted with when you're using the, um, the uh, fluorescence. Now, also, you might notice here that this is a shimmer. And so that shimmer was this um, duo tone. So this is, it says right on it, effect. And then here it says blue, green. So green is that undertone. And you can see it has like an amazing, it looks uh, metallic, right? And then here are some more little, uh, whatever you want them to be. You want them to be mice, little rabbits, more kitty cats. <laughs> They're just a menagerie there, right? Now, you see this right here? That is three coats of the glitter. So let me show you what the glitter looks like. There's the difference between, this is gold, paint so you see the gold paint here it's flat and it has uh, just a beautiful glimmer of gold this however is two coats of the gold glitter so there's the gold glitter the silver glitter and the uh, rainbow glitter so if you look here around here is the rainbow glitter so you can see the different, I put two coats of rainbow glitter around that. And this is the two coats of the gold. So there's gold and silver. This is that same blue. And the interesting thing is when you look at that blue on here, remember what the background color of the shoe was. The shoe was white. So here's the other shoe unpainted. So it was white. And when you put a, uh, a duo color on white, the main color or the main tone is going to be the mass tone or the blue that you see here. When you put it on a dark color, remember how I said when you put it on the dark color, that's when that undertone shows up. This is exactly the same color, but it looks much more green on this dark brown background. Mm -hmm. Same color, same color out of the, um, the bottle here. But here, when I painted it on with a brush, and uh, two coats, it looks green. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. And then I use the marker to go over and give me my uh, my definition of my um, lightning bolt mm -hmm. there. 
Okay, but let me show you the um, the gold. So this is metallic gold. It says metal gold. And when you're working with the metallics, um, it's better if you stir it rather than shake it. So I have um, some sticks here because the metallics have uh, have little bits of mica in them and the mica can fall down to the bottom. Okay, so here we go. And then now I'm gonna shake it because I wanna get some gold into the lid, right? Because I paint from the lid. Okay, there we go. And uh, so let's get another brush going here. And this is going to be the gold metallic. Beautiful, wow. That is really um, dense going on even in one coat. So there's the gold metallic like that. I love the bronze metallic. The bronze metallic is, um, this is only one coat of the bronze metallic here, but you can see the shimmer to it. And uh, I like to use that for wood, you know, to give something the look of wood. All right, now this one is large glitter with gold. So again, I'm, I want, instead of shaking it, I wanna use a stick and I want to mix it. Now it's gonna look milky because that it's an acrylic emulsion, right? So acrylic emulsions can look milky. And then it has tons of gold mica, large gold mica in them, uh, flakes. So let's do that and get this. And then we'll use the same brush. and you'll see the difference. And then this, I always find I need to do at least two coats, sometimes three coats to get the density that I want. Now, if you just wanna get a light coating of gold glitter, then you don't need to use more than one coat, but it's gonna look milky until it dries because you see the milkiness in there. And then once it dries, of course, that milkiness goes away. So here's what it looks like with the milkiness, mm. the glitter. But then, of course, this is what it looks like once it's dry. Oh, nice. Love that. <laughs> I love stuff that's glittery. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, is there anything that anyone else would like to see? Um, I I have Ooh, one. You know I have one question this from Arlene. Enough. I'm going to take this off. <laughs> Normally, I would put a second coat on uh, before I remove the masking fluid, but let's do it. Let's do it. So here is my um, eraser, and I'm going to just gently rub across here. Oh yeah, I'm going to show you another trick too that I do. Um, after I finish pulling it up. Oh, the reveal is so much fun. I love doing the reveals with the uh, masking fluid. These are little clouds up here. Could I use my finger? Yep, I can. So hold on just a second, I'll show you that. Isn't that great? I just love that. Now, periodically I'm pulling off that um, latex and see, I could use my finger. But what I find is when you do a lot of this, you end up with um, no uh, fingerprint <laughs> when you do it a lot. Oh. I don't know why, see, I didn't have two coats. So it was pulling off more of this than uh, I wanted because I really needed two coats, but let's do this anyway. I can always go back and coat it with more. Yeah, it's it's also okay. pretty early too. So let's too. say this turned out the way I wanted it to. <laughs> so you really do need that second coat because you see how it uh, it um, some of the red came up in between. Where here it didn't. Here I got a really nice clean with two coats of red over top of it and plenty of time in between. All right, now um, what I do after I've taken off the majority of that is I go in with a blade 
So this is an X-Acto knife. And what I find is sometimes there are um, chunks. Sometimes there are little chunks left on the edges here. And I just, using the, the knife gently and flat, I put the blade flat on there and I just pick up those rough edges and then they just come right off. But I find that's a good way with, if you've done your two coats of the background and the background is um, dried at least 24 hours, then um, I didn't have it pull any of that up when I did this, if I was just gentle using it to get the edges off right there, like that. Okay, now when I'm all done and I wanna get ready to um, do the, um, where is it, the varnish. Like I said, I always start with the gloss varnish. So let's see, this side is actually done and uh, dried long enough. So um, it looks milky, but of course it's gonna dry clear. Let's see, one more brush. Um, I usually like to use a fan brush for doing um, varnishing just because I find that way I get a good, it quickly goes over the surface. Now I'm not just doing the red area. I also need to do the blue. So I'm gonna go right up to the edge there of the stitching on the blue. And like I said, I do gloss first. And then if I want to cut down the background um, or the shininess of it, then I go ahead and do the, um, the matte in one or two coats after the gloss. Oh my gosh, it just makes the color pop when you put the varnish on, it's fabulous. <laughs> All right, are there any other questions? Because that is uh, the end of the presentation. I'm just looking around to see if there's anything else. Nope, we talked about the gluing. So for instance, I would take this tribal wolf and I would put slather the glue all over the back here. And then I also put glue on the surface that I'm going to be gluing it onto. Let it get kind of tacky and right down, roll over it with a roller and that'll go right onto the sleeve or the back of the jacket, just like that. <laughs> all right, any other questions, Kim? I don't know if you I can- see we're one or two minutes to uh, our ending time. I think your earbuds are out, so you can't I'm hear me. I'm not hearing you. Um, where is can your, I get um, Is your uh, microphone muted, Kim? Nope. I think every, other people can hear, right? I think your earbuds are out. So how oh, do I, I get your- Oh, I see you talking, but I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, I know why I can't hear you. Okay, hold on a second. I know you're just talking away. It was because I didn't have my headphones in. <laughs> yes. Sorry about that. You're just yik yakking and I'm missing it all. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I think you can hear me now. I was just saying, I think your earbuds are out. So yeah, that's great. Yep, yep. Um, one question we have, uh, Arlene Weston asks, uh, we live in a cold climate and if you've got really thick paint applied to leather, is flexibility or cracking or delaminating an issue in extreme cold? Uh, you know what? I don't know the answer to that. I do not. I know that you're not supposed to transport the paint like this mm, when it's yes. freezing. Yeah. I know you're not supposed to do that. Yeah. Um, but I don't know uh, what the circumstance is. You know what? That would be a good question to ask Victor, mm -hmm. uh, Kim, and yeah. then have him get the, uh, the technical folks to let you know. Because I know in the frozen tundra where y'all are. <laughs> yeah. Not not but this week it, particularly, but yeah, no. sometimes. <laughs> yes, yes, that it can be an issue. And so uh, <laughs> I understand the question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I also thought maybe your masking fluid, uh, you took it off really early. So I think you probably would have preferred to let the, the red cure maybe 24 hours even too. Yeah, so yes. I think that was, yeah, that was good. That was yeah, good. Yeah, I would have, I would have left it, um, I would have put, 
I leave instead of 15 minutes in between coats because it's humid in Florida, I leave about 30 minutes. But mm -hmm. I know one time when I was in Colorado where it was super dry, the paints were drying really fast. So it just depends on your environment. But I leave mine for about 30 minutes and then I come back and I put my second coat on and then you're correct. I would leave that overnight before I would uh, pull it off. Yeah. I try not to go further than 24 hours with the um, with the masking fluid, although I, I read somewhere you can go up to to be coated within 15 days of applying. Yeah, cleans off with soapy water. So, yeah, it cleans off with soapy water, but don't put it down your sink. <laughs> right. That was that was a great tip I had never even thought about. So I'm, I'm right? I think that's something I'll share for sure. Um, so before we close, any other questions? You can pop in with your mic or ask if you have anything in particular. I'm gonna put the purse here because I just love the purse. <laughs> I love my purse. What I do is I go to the um, thrift store and I find purses for under ten dollars. Mm -hmm. And I have another one here. That I've already degreased or delaminated in red, and this is going to get a um, uh, either a bird of paradise or um, a passion flower or something like that. <laughs> here. It's leather. It's leather. I just recommend you find the good leather ones. They're not that expensive if you're at a thrift store, and then you can do something like this. Now here you're going to see if I hold it up closely, can you see the gold shimmer right there? The gold shimmer was this glitter one. Do you see what I do on the lids? When I first get my paints, I open them up and I take a little bit out and I just put a dab on the lid like that. And then that way, when I'm looking at my paints like this, in a, in a, um, where I store them, I can see exactly what the color is right away. Um, in the beginning so that uh, that you know that's like when you get uh, let's say you get new watercolors and the first thing you do is swatch them right because you want to know what they look like on your favorite paper um, yeah. here the first thing that I do is I take them and I the same with the set of color normally I'll take them and I immediately just put a little dab on the, the lid like that and then I know um, I can just glance at my bottles and I know exactly what it is. Uh, let's see, what's the shelf life of the fabric paints and the leather paints after the bottle is open? Um, excellent question. What The information I've gotten from the laboratory before is um, six months. <laughs> Once they're open. Now what I do periodically is if I know that my paints are going to sit for a little while, I will open this up. And then, <laughs> this is one of the studio tricks. I just take my um, water bottle like this, my water spray bottle. I spray a little bit of water in there and then I do that. Either that or you can take a little bit of um, saran wrap and, you know, like your cling wrap. And what you want to do is kind of shove the cling wrap in there with it, some coming out here and some inside, and then close it. And then, um, so that you don't have air in there and that will also help to uh keep it you know long term keep them longer <laughs> yeah yeah air in, air inside the containers is why your products dry out so quickly so um we find even turning the containers upside down will will help uh to keep keep things dry or from drying right. out too quickly in the container right right Yay. right and i just i I always keep my spray bottle around. Um, I usually work on a little styrofoam plate like this. So I will normally um, just pull some of the paint out and put it here. If I'm doing a lot of color mixing, like when mm -hmm. I was doing this purse, I did tons of color mixing uh, with the greens and the yellows and the pinks and all that. Actually, um, let me show you real quick. Like well, we have one minute left. I left these two petals right here. Um, without having um, done the glazing because I wanted to show you real quick the glazing. So to glaze, I took my pink. So this beautiful, I love this candy pink. Oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. Um, so I take a little bit of the candy pink like this. Let me get this brush like that. Just a little bit. When you glaze, you don't need a lot. 
So I have a little bit of the pink right there. And then I'm going to use one of my uh, droppers. And where was the thinner? So now, and I'll take my thinner. And I just want to grab a little tiny bit there. I don't need much. So let me set this down. I do it like one drop at a time, right? So I just put one drop on there and I'm creating a glaze. It's better to create a glaze with a medium than it is to create a glaze with a with water because you want to be sure that your um it's going to stick to your surface and then now i have a little bit of glaze on here and i just went over top of the petals this is how i um, make the petals all cohesive like this and then the trick is you need to real quick while it's still wet you grab a paper towel and then you pick it back up like that. And that glazes that area and you can do single glazes, you can do multiple glazes to deepen. Um, but that's how I made, for instance, this whole flower cohesive was I glazed the whole thing. So you see right there. I love doing glazes. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a trick right? Doing the mm -hmm. glazes is a real trick to deepening your colors and just bringing your whole artwork together. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah right. it helps with it helps with blending for sure because things dry and you have to layer. It's it's a great it's a great tip. Yes, yes. Yeah. And the, the, so the thinner definitely I highly recommend getting the thinner <laughs> for that purpose. All right. That's, that's it for what I have for you. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I appreciate everybody who's come by. Yay. And Yay. <laughs>